Well, it only took them almost a year and a half to admit what genuine Tolkien fans have known for a long time. Hello, this is Mara Jade, and I'm back with another video, and as I stated, genuine Tolkien fans have known for a long time this series would be in no way connected to anything Tolkien wrote, because for one thing, they do not have the rights to anything dealing with the Second Age, so Rings of Power is pure studio fiction. Not only that, not only that, but you have the uh, showrunner for Rings of uh, power coming out and calling the series back in February of 2022, the novel Tolkien never wrote. This is stemming from a Vanity Fair article, and in the Vanity Fair article there is, quote, from Lindsay Weber, executive producer of the series, it felt only natural to us that an adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect what the world actually looks like, not the world Tolkien created. No, God fucking forbid they actually adapted anything that Tolkien created, but then again, as I stated, they don't have the rights to anything in the Second Age. The only thing Second Age related would be the appendices at the end of the Lord of the Rings books. And in that, basically, is only about 20 pages worth of information. So they're trying to get five seasons out of that many pages, which is the barest, which is the barest of information. But again, if they actually had the rights to something like this that they lied to us about saying that they did, but in fact they didn't. We would actually be getting a true Second Age adaptation. So we've known this for a long fucking time. So the phrase, no shit Sherlock, the phrase, thank you Captain Obvious, and so forth, springs to mind at this point. But in any way, let's just dive right into this article so we can get a gauge of what this actress, this race-swapped Tara Muriel, is saying now. So without further ado, here it is. Rings of Power actress Cynthia Adai Robinson, who plays Tara Muriel in the show, recently revealed the first season of the show was created to warp the story for newcomers to Tolkien's works. During an appearance at the Monte Carlo Television Festival in June, Variety reports Adai Robinson stated, quote, Season 1 is really about an introduction. You're setting the stage for aspects of the story that are maybe a little bit more familiar to audiences. Nothing at all in Season 1 was at all at all fucking familiar to audiences. Nothing in season one at all reflected the world Tolkien created. Because we do know a little bit more of these next few things that happen that will be part of season two. She continued, but there are a lot of people who have never read the book. They've never seen the movies. So that season one setup really is, in my mind, it's really for those people who are very new to Tolkien. And God forbid they at all... and. When I say God forbid, I mean newcomers who maybe watch the se this first season and are thinking, oh wow, I really want to read the book. I really want to read the story about these characters. They're going to find the works Tolkien wrote and they're going to have a really incredibly rude wake-up call because nothing in Tolkien's works is reflected even in season one. Nothing. They're going to wonder, where are these characters? And I'm talking about the non-canonical ones. They don't at all appear in these works because they're non-canonical. They were created solely for the purpose of this series. They're going to wonder, why is Galadriel not leading an army? Why is she not hunting down Sauron? Why is Elrond the commander of the army? I thought Galadriel was. And they're going to be going off of Season 1 of Rings of Power. They're going to wonder why Kellen Brimbor looks is described one way, but he looks like uh, essentially Mrs. Doubtfire and Amumu in Season 1. Where's the Hillbrand character? And so forth. They're going to be wondering all of this stuff. They're going to be wondering why Tar Muriel is described as fair complexion in so many words. Why our fair is on. Why does he look like Father Time in the series, but he's not that old in the story? What about Elendil and Isildur? Isildur has a brother. Where the fuck is he? And Isildur does not have a sister, but she appears in the series. They're going to be wondering all of this. You are ruining this for newcomers. So season two, you're going to see a lot of storylines start to come through. She concluded, God fucking damn it. What storyline? They were all over the place with the story. They couldn't even get the timeline right. Adai Robinson's comments are quite common amongst cast members for the Prime Video series. Sophia Numvet, who plays Princess Disa, non-canonical character, dwarf with no beard, told PA Media last July, we are redressing the balance. What balance was there needed to be re redressed? What, where, where was the imbalance? 
Oh wait, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Tolkien's Middle Earth is too white for these people, so they had to redress that. They had to make it better. That's what she means, pretty much. Within the film and television, television industry, and of course this franchise, and I hope lots of franchises moving forward. So basically, be better, bigots. These are the best people for the roles, but what they've done is open up the doors for people of all backgrounds to come forward and have the opportunity to rise. She posited. Let me translate that to be political, uh, be political pawns for the entertainment industry, because that's that's all the entertainment industry sees, the minority casting choices. That's all they see them as political pawns. All right, to be used against anyone criticizing their series. So if you at all criticize, let's say Princess Tisa's character. All right, then you must be, insert racist or sexist or whatever, pretty much. So you must be that. There's nothing wrong with this character. There's nothing wrong with this character. It's not on us. It's not on our uh, subpar storytelling, our bastardization of Middle Earth and so forth. No, it is on you because they expected fans, they expected actual fans of Tolkien to be brand loyalists, pretty much. To bend over and take it up the ass and be thankful that they, we were, they were doing it for us just because they slapped the Lord of the Rings title on the series. That's what they expected of us. And when that didn't happen, when that did not happen, they dusted off the old playbook. All right. They dusted off the old narrative playbook and accused us of being racist, sexist, misogynistic, and so forth, because we were criticizing what they, what they considered a gift to us. She then boldly asserted to be part of creating accessibility for generations to come. The Hobbit has been popular since its publication in 1937. Lord of the Rings has been popular since its publications in 1954 and 55. They've been accessible, and they've been translated into nearly every language on Earth. They've been accessible. For new generations, this is their version of Tolkien. This is the same asinine absurdity, like, you know, absurdity. Asinine means absurd, pretty much. But the same ridiculousness and stupidity as someone saying my truth. Like, his truth, her truth, my truth, their truth. That's the same fucking stupidity as their version of Tolkien. There is no their version of Tolkien. There is no his, her, my version of anything Tolkien wrote. There is his version. Uh, when I say, when I say, like, you know, Tolkien's version. There is Tolkien's version, all right? Misspoke there a little bit. But you get you get what I'm saying. There's Tolkien's version. None of us, all right, all right. We don't have versions, all right. If you have a version of a Tolkien wrote, then you were never a fan, all right. Like you were never a fan. If you like, you have a ver like a version of what he wrote in your mind, meaning that you are essentially rewriting what he wrote in your head, then you were never a fan because the only version that matters is what Tolkien created. That's it. That is fucking it. Same with the truth. There's only the truth. There's only the version. And so forth. This is what my daughter will see of Tolkien's works. And you don't love your daughter. I will come out and fucking say that. Then you don't love your daughter. Alright? Because if you truly loved her, you would not be pushing this on her. You would not be... put Like, you love the narrative you can instill and brainwash her with. That's what you love, pretty much. And I will full on say that. I will full on say this. Because no mother in her right mind would say this and be thankful that this is the like the version that her daughter's gonna grow up with. Not not Tolkien's vision, but the Rings of Power vision. It's their time and it's so important and I hope many people will see this fantasy and be able to relate to it. She continued, This is a reflection of the world we live in. No, it should be a reflection of Middle Earth, what Tolkien created, the actual land and world and so forth that Tolkien envisioned. His vision there are many, and we are different, and we will embrace and discover and peel back and learn and educate and be educated. There's the key words there. Educate. Be educated. Essentially, be better, bigots. You you will bend over, you will take it, and you'll be thankful that we are giving it to you like that. That's what's going on in their minds, pretty much. And we can only do that when we embrace and love our differences. No fucking shit. What did she think one of the themes in The Lord of the Rings in particular is? What does she fucking think? One of, like, does she not? I, I know I'm asking a rhetorical question, but does she not know the themes in Lord of the Rings? Like, she literally just sta like stated pretty much one of the themes. All right, of disparate groups, 
all right? Setting aside their differences, forming alliances, coming together to defeat the evil. And along the way, developing deep friendships, bonds, and so forth. Legolas and Gimli, for example, all right? Elves and dwarves pretty much hated each other. So the fact that you had an, an elf and a dwarf forming a bond of friendship in Lord of the Rings was was incredible. So incredible, in fact, that Gimli was actually bestowed the honor of traveling to the Grey Havens. No, sh and I say this, I say again, no shit. YouTuber European Lore reacted to Adai Robinson's comments saying, This is the scary part. Imagine. Imagine the Rings of Power being the first encounter with Tolkien for somebody. Yes, imagine that, because they are going to have the brutal wake-up call. The brutal reality is going to hit them in the face that nothing in the Rings of Power at all is in this. He then encouraged his viewers to not watch the series and even asked people to dissuade people from watching the series. I will disagree with that to an extent. I don't tell people what they can and cannot watch pretty much. It's up to them. It's up to them. I will tell them everything wrong with the series, but I will leave it up to them should they choose to watch it. However, I will, say, I will full on admit that if they do watch it, I recommend sailing the high seas. That's what I tell people. Sail the high seas. Don't give Amazon clicks. That's what I tell people. But I don't tell them what they can and cannot watch. Or should and should not watch. Now, I don't feel s sorry for much for people. I have learned that it is quite useless to feel sorry for people because nobody will feel sorry for you. But for those theoretical people who might encounter Tolkien, because this is no Tolkien, you know Rings of Prime. For the first time watching this shit, please don't. Please, please, if you know somebody who has never read Tolkien, who has never seen Peter Jackson's films, and they are contemplating watching Rings of Power, please just stop them. Please give them the Lord of the Rings book. Please, please be the nice person. Be the savior. Good the deed. And the universe will thank you, he concluded. I'll do... I'll give whomever a Lord of the Rings book. I'll tell them to watch the Lord of the Rings movies. But again, I don't tell people what they should and should not watch. I leave it up to them. I leave it up to them. So, what do you make of Adai Robinson's comments about how the show aims to warp people's vision? Again, it's nothing new. It is nothing new. We've known this for a long time. When I say we, I mean genuine Tolkien's fans. We've known. Anybody who's paid attention to the news since it was revealed they did not have the rights to the Second Age and then they con continued lies and so forth, uh, saying that they're going to tell the story that Tolkien never wrote, pretty much, that they are going to... middle is going to reflect the world that we live in, not the world Tolkien created. We've known this. And that's just like scrap scraping the surface of everything that went down leading up to the premiere for Season 1 of Rings of Power. But at any rate, what are your thoughts down in the comments below? Did you watch Season 1? Did you watch all of it? Did you watch some of it? Did you check out after the astoundingly boring first two episodes? Lore breaking aside, what are your thoughts? And if you did watch all of season one, are you planning on watching season two at all? Let me know all the fun stuff down in the comments below. I will be live later tonight on my YouTube channel with Orange Hat Reviews and maybe another guest talking the sequel to Jaws, Jaws 2, as part of the ones and twos discussions. We discussed Jaws last week and now we're talking the direct sequel, Jaws 2, from 1978. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Share it with me if you will. This is Mario Jade. Catch you on the dark side. And all I'm going to say to this is, again, fuck Rings of Power.